Good morning, this is your friend Angel over at Palm Chevrolet and today is Friday the 27th of January and we have this beautiful vehicle here ready to, to take off back uh, to their home. Uh, it's a customer who ordered a car from the state of Virginia and he's traveling today, Mr. Hatfield. Here's your beautiful machine ready to go. Uh, he's traveling today to pick that up and drive it back to his home state in Virginia. So before he take off in this beautiful machine, decided to bring it out of the showroom of course I had to go get gas for it and while I'm at it why not to make a quick video for him so here it is this is a torch red Z51 package with the high wing and it also has the front lift as well and it's a 2LT so we had all the luxury components you can expect in a car like this such as the cool seats memory seats heads of display everything is there uh, unlike the 3LT though this one uh, don't have the suede and stuff like that on the inside where everything else is here the 2LT has as much equipment as the 3LT and to me that's the best value car but a unique thing about this car unlike the other other cars I show you is that it has a high wing spoiler and it's a color match high wing spoiler I show cars before with a high wing spoiler but this one is a body color one and it's super nice i love the way it looks i've never seen one in person i figured it would look okay but man this thing looks awesome i love the looks of the high wing and ironically it doesn't bother you too much when you open the trunk area uh, another cool thing about it oh let me show you this all the poles on the high wing spoiler are carbon flash and that's cool because he, he ordered the carbon flash wheels and it has carbon flash everywhere you can see carbon flash on the scoops there's carbon flash on the mirror which he by the way ordered in black as well uh, so you got a lot of components in the car that has carbon flash such as the front and rear bumper too but when you look at this spoiler from the front it is quite amazing how uh, chevy worked this out the spoiler if you notice here goes with the roof line so it kind of matches the roof line at the exit over there so all that air flows perfectly. I don't know if it's, you can see it on camera here, but it's quite amazing how the roof matched the high wing spoiler there. And it's worth mentioning, the high wing spoiler does slow your car down a little bit at highway speed, uh, but, well, I should say at high speed, <laughs> not highway speed, higher than highway speed, <laughs> uh, because of the downforce that it provides, up to 400 pounds of downforce, that's a lot at 150 miles an hour, but it will keep this car planted at those speed, you will save you feel safe regardless of what speed you're doing. Being a 2LT, of course, we will have the front cameras. They come standard in all the 2LTs, uh, so you don't have to buy the 3LT to get those. That's one of the main reasons uh, you should get a 2LT instead of a 1LT is because of the camera system. There's another camera on the windshield that operates your performance data recorder as well as uh, operates as a dash cam. Now, if you look on the front wheels, these are 19 inch Michelin tires, of course, and it's a C51, so it will say Z51 right there on the caliper. Those are six pistons calipers on the front, and there's four pistons calipers on the back. Uh, also, you get the uh, bigger rotors with the C51 package. But these wheels look amazing, and a 19 inch, and there's a 20 inch on the back. Speaking about the back, you can notice too, it says Z51 right there on the caliper as well, but there's another caliper here, and that's the one for your parking brake. It's an electronic parking brake. So instead of using the hydraulic brake for the parking brake like before, we're using a separate one, and it's completely electronic. Uh, so that's the decision they went. Most supercars are like this, uh, and I think that's the way, right way to go. Uh, but it's quite amazing. This tire, of course, cannot be placed on the front you cannot rotate this tire front and back but they do rotate side to side uh, you don't have to put it on the in one side only anymore another cool thing about this car uh, you notice that we had a torch red color but we had edge red calipers instead of bright red calipers which is what you see in most torch red cars uh, that makes it very unique i've never seen a torch red with edge red and if you wonder why he made that decision but i don't know but <laughs> There is a good thing about it, and it's that the edge red is inside of the engine. So it will match something on the car regardless. This is how it looks from the back. Let me show you guys. Beautiful. 
Now, if I uh, press the uh, lights here, this is a remote, one of them. Uh, you can hit the unlock switch. You see the lights are kind of sequential. Now, if we hide the lock button, the LEDs come on. You can see how they illuminate on the, on the front, uh, on the back here. Now, to open the trunk, you can use the key for, of course. You can tap this button twice and it open it. But what you want to look is for the first E right here. Simulates an 8, and that's a button to open the trunk. Now, you can open the trunk from here. That's an option, but not very common. The best way to do it is by grabbing it like this and pull. Now, if you notice, we have the engine back here. It's a 6.2 liter, 495 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque. And it's the only normally aspirated car in the whole world to be in the two-second club. It's worth mentioning, the block is sitting lower than the rear tires. It's quite amazing how they did that. It's the only car in the world in the two-second club without a turbo, without a supercharged. Uh, quarter mile numbers are around 11 seconds. Uh, some people are doing nine seconds, fully tuned and stuff. Uh, and you can notice, uh, you can tell this car has had a magnetic drive suspension because of these cables that popped out of here. This is a new generation of magnetic drive suspension and it's amazing. Now if you wonder uh, how you work in this engine, it's quite easy. You just come from the side, here's your uh, coolant reservoir, here's your engine oil reservoir, and here's your dipstick. Now, uh, Mr. Hatfield, if you're going to check the oil on this car, it has to be warmed up for at least 15 minutes and it has to be running. Yes, you heard that right. This engine has to be running to check the oil, which is completely different as any other car we ever had. Now you notice this is a cargo space. I'm gonna remove this here. I'll tell you about this in just a second. Just wanna show you the cargo space for give you some perspective here. It's pretty big, big enough to fit the roof. I'll show you that before in my videos and big enough for two golf bags. They always use golf bags as reference, but yes, you can fit two golf bags here perfectly. It's a big trunk, so big that it fits person. So that's why we have this emergency release so you can escape from the mafia this uh, blows in the dark, so you can totally escape from the Mafia, but run in that direction for your life and call the police. <laughs> All right, so we show you how to escape. Now, if you wonder what this is, this whole thing here are air ducts for your brakes. Now, we give you the customers the option whether they want this or not, because uh, it's been incidents when the air ducts suck debris from the street, like leaves and papers and stuff like that. And then it gets pretty hot in there. It gets... Uh, smoky <laughs> so if you're not going to take the car to the track we recommend you don't use those for normal street use but if you want us to put it on we put it on for you no problem no cost uh, as we're mentioning to close this trunk it's good to do it from the back but you can also do it from the side see how much it opens this is because the trunk itself if you want to work on the side close by itself you don't have to really push it too hard you just present it to it and it seals perfectly if you notice right there Everything sealed, man. I love this, these screws and everything. So quite easy to use the cargo area. These on the back window are heat extractors to release the heat of the engine. And this right here is completely open. There is a defroster on this back window. And if you notice, all these dots on the back window are little tiny Corvette logo. There's hundreds of them everywhere. <laughs> now I'm going to walk to the front of the car now. And I'm going to show you your front area. One thing about this car, the lines are beautiful. You see how they all come together to the front of the car, to the nose of the car? It's perfectly, every gap is three millimeters or less. Quite amazing. Under the driver's side headlight, there's a little switch. You're just gonna find it right here. You just press it and it opens your trunk or your trunk in the front. That's what we call it, the trunk. Now, you open this, quite simple. This one uh, has a lot of cargo space as well. If you notice, we have the cargo net already installed. And as you order, here's your uh, quick charger or clicker charger, as you said. And that's to keep your battery charged when you leave your car in the garage for weeks or months. Battery is located right here. You just have to remove this panel. This is the brake fluid and windshield washer fluid is on the front. So a different thing about all Corvettes. The battery is now on the front instead of the back. The engine is on the back instead of the front. And we have a front. <laughs> uh, now, it's big enough to fit a small person. So we have another emergency relief that glows in the dark. You push that and go for your life now in that direction. 
I will actually <laughs> run in a different direction, but that's just me. Now there's a 12 volt outlet here, so you can plug your uh, charger. So if you connect your charger or anything here, and you want to keep your battery charged, uh, there is a do double lock feature on this uh, uh, front, excuse me. So if you just press it once, it's going to stay closed, but it's still open enough so you can get the wire out, plug it to your wall and keep the battery charged. Now, if you try to drive the car like this, it's going to limit your speed to 26 miles an hour. So make sure you give it the second push, just like that, and everything goes back to normal, all sealed. So you can close it twice, uh, you can close it once, and then the second time. I'd rather do it the first two clicks like that, because it's a little easier. Now, I'm going to walk to the passenger seat. Let's talk about this for a second. So we have a passenger seat with the same features the driver's seat has. Uh, for instance, let me show you why. This is memory seat for the passenger seat. i never seen a Corvette or any Chevy product with passenger seat, uh, passenger memory seat, that's very unique. And look how spacious and roomy uh, this car is. Uh, in the 2LT, you get the GT1 seats. He ordered it though with the red seat, but it's nice little touch here. Uh, but you can opt for the GT2 seats or the competition seat. These ones are the one that comes standard with the 2LT and 1LT package, and they are as comfortable as the two uh, GT2 seats. The only thing that changed the GT2 seat, we have an opening here for the like, carbon fiber inserts and stuff. Now there is a manual release to get out of the car in case of an emergency, or you can just get out of the car by pushing this button. It's quite easy. This is your window switch, power lock switch, and very important, this is your glove box. I'm showing the glove box because inside of the glove box there is an SD card slot and that's for the performance data recorder or your dash cam. So you have to open the glove box, put it there, and it can be up to 256 gigabytes now. It used to be only 32 gigabytes, so they make a big step in that <laughs> as far as the SD card goes. So this is the passenger seat of the Corvette. This is your air vents and you have separate control for the climate here as well let me show you the inside but before we do that i like to show you how it sounds so let's do it my friend this is the black emblem key there's another one with a chrome emblem and to get it running you just push this button twice in the middle whoa the cracking it's awake <laughs> Oh, well, forgot to mention, this is the first Corvette in history to have uh, backup sensors. There's one here, there's one here on this heat extractor, and two more, of course, on that side. Uh, if you notice on the roof, there's an, a camera, and back here, there's another camera. So we have two backup cameras and three cameras on the front. This is also the first Corvette in history to have blind spot alert. Yes, it's the first time we have blind spot alert because the boxes for the blind spot were here where the heat extraction was on the C7. So all this year we have blind spot alert, rear cross traffic alert in every car pretty much, but not the Corvette for those reasons because of the nature of the beast, of course. I'm gonna open this uh, driver's door. And if you notice, it's got the same amenities I just showed you in the other door with the memory seats, but it has two more buttons. This one is for the trunk opening. This one is for the trunk. Then we have this uh, power lock switch, power door release to open the door, window switches, and this button right here is for your mirrors. You can see when I push in, the mirrors close. Again, another new for Corvette. This is the first Corvette in history to have electronic folding mirrors. Never had them before. It's pretty amazing. Now, down one over here, I can show you your parking brake. It's located on the left side. It used to be in the middle. So very important, it's now under there. But it works the same way, you just push it. And it activates it, the, the parking brake. Here's your power uh, power uh, seat switch. And of course your red seat belt. Let me uh, fix it over here for you. There we go, I like to put it, there we go. It looks very nice. So this is a jet black interior. Looks amazing. Straight to the point. When you get in, this is what you're gonna see, my friend. And this is called the welcome very nice nice touch <laughs> so now the car is running i can take it away right nope nope it won't do anything i have to hit the brake with the key in my pocket and hit the start button 
Now everything comes to life, including the radio, which I just need to block. There we go. <laughs> It's telling me this uh, information now. This screen will go away once we do the full activation of your car. If you notice here on the left, it said how many miles it has, five miles. And this is how many miles you have in your gas tank, 419. Your steering wheel telescope, so it goes up, down, or it can go in, and it can go out. So you can adjust your steering wheel where you want it, and it will memorize that position. So it will memorize the position of the seats, rear view mirrors, and of course, your steering wheel, uh, when you memorize your seat. Uh, for the passenger, of course, we got two memory seats, but we also can set an exit uh, button to uh, elevate or lower the seats when you get out of the car. So that's another option. And if you wonder what all of this is, it looks kind of intimidating. This is all climate control for the AC. So basically you push this one in the middle to turn it on. You can see the AC is on. This is your recycler button. When I get air from the outside, if you want to increase the airflow, you just tap this up. Your airflow goes up. If you want to lower your AC, you push it down. Now, on the top here, this is a driver settings for the climate. So I can change my settings from my side. And the passenger had the same over here if they want to change their own settings. So you can have two separate temperatures in the front seats, as well as the cool and heated seat. So you can activate your cool seat here. This is high, medium, low, off. And you can do the same with the heated seat, high, medium, low, off. Quite easy. Now, if you notice here, we have uh, this little thing. This is called the hand rest. So you're supposed to put your hand here to rest your hand. But under there, there is a driving mode selector. So that's how you change your driving modes. There's five of them. And there's two of them that you can fully customize for yourself. And so all you do is rotate this. I'm gonna show you in a minute how that works. Then we have your shifter. This is the new X-Speed dual clutch transmission by my Tremec. Uh, so this is how it works. If you want to put the car in park, you hit the P. If you want to put the car in neutral, you hit the N. If you want to put the car in manual mode, you hit the M. You push it. Now, if you want to move this car in reverse, you're going to pull reverse. And that's how your camera comes on. If you want to put it in drive, you pull the D, so the drive. So and then the camera changes to the front. So the two things you're going to use to move the car are switches you're going to pull and the other three are not moving the car. This is park, neutral, and manual. So that's pretty simple, right? The reverse you pull and the drive you pull, the rest you don't. Quite easy. Now the cool thing about it is that it activates, as you can see, the cameras, but you can also uh, change how this transmission behaves when you have your driving mode selection. I'll show you that in a minute. So basically you can go here to settings and we can go to vehicle and we can go to drive mode customization. So let's say, for example, I want to customize my Z mode. See, let me change <laughs> the engine sound, the steering, suspension, engine, and shifting. So you can decide how aggressive you want your engine and shifting to happen, or how aggressive your brake pedal feels, or how responsive your steering wheel is, or even how your car sounds. Let me show you how that means. So right now the engine sound is all the way to the top. I just opened the door, listen to this. Yeah, pretty loud, right? Now if I hit this button here, I'm making it in stealth mode. So now even though I'm in sport mode, it's quiet. So you, depend, you decide how you wanna drive your car. You can choose your, create your own Z mode for this and make it quiet or make it loud. It's up to you. PTM is something for track, and I'm gonna use that right now. <laughs> We also have another one you can adjust, which is your my mode. And my mode is something you use more to relax. If you're in my mode, you just don't want to make too much noise, etc. So you can adjust everything to the lower setting. And your steering wheel has, you know, a, a softer feel than it is in sport mode. Your best friend in here, though, is your house button. You hit the house button to go to the main menu. Now, there's another three buttons here. This one is for traction control. You're never gonna press that unless you wanna do some burnouts, donuts, or get into racing modes. And then we have the lift. This is the button to lift the nose of your car. When you press it, it's gonna say vehicle racing. Now you can feel it, it goes up two inches in just three seconds. It gives you the option to remember. So if you wanna remember this location, you hit the left button, and it will remember this location. Up to a thousand locations can be recorded in the GPS system, uh, thanks to be a, a 
uh, LT2, it will have a GPS, and then you can add it, of course, the, uh, the lift. Uh, so for instance, if you record the area where you go open your driveway, every time you approach that area, automatically we raise the nose of your car. Now, if you want to lower the car, you push the button again, and now it says vehicle lowering. You can feel it right away lowering, and it's done. It only takes three seconds to go up and down two inches, and then, of course, it remembers. There's another button on the right of this. This is the front camera. So if you hit the button that says front, it will immediately activate the front cameras. And this is a feature in response to the C7, which didn't have a dedicated button. You had to go through the screen, and people were always looking for that. This is a blessing to have, because you can see totally the nose of the car there. Now, you can see the left side of the nose and the right side of the bumper. So this is the top side. Now, if you want to change the view, you can hit this blue button. What you see in blue is what you're looking at. See? So if I hit this one here, now the blue line is showing me the back of the car. This is a 180 degree angle, bigger angle. I have a hitch view for the front. I can do the tree view, and I can eliminate or activate the uh, guidelines. And these guidelines are there when you move the steering wheel, they follow you. It's something to help you park the car, but if you don't want it there, you can take them off and have a full visibility. Now, this might not be enough to see around your Corvette. This is one mirror, that's one mirror, and then you have this mirror. <laughs> but what you can see on this mirror is pretty much the, well, the back window, I guess. <laughs> I can see the spoiler back there, but there's not much visibility other than that. So to solve that problem, we have a camera on the roof that I show you, and you can just flip this, mo this mirror into a monitor. So it's a, it's a monitor, it's a mirror. Monitor, mirror. Now, when you live in a monitor, not only you can see 100% better than what you see in a normal mirror, uh, you can hit this button here and adjust it. So for instance, I can make it darker if it's too bright, or I can make it brighter. I'm gonna mark brighter. I can hit the check mark again right here, navigate through the menu so for instance right now I'm in the zoom menu so if I hit zoom up and zoom excuse me zoom in and zoom out I can change that if I hit the check mark again I can go to the tilt menu now I can tilt my camera up so I'm not looking at the spoiler <laughs> or I can tilt my camera down I can see my beautiful spoiler again so you decide how you want to use it uh, you can leave it on a hundred percent of the time you never have to shut this off it does get time to get used to it but it happens really fast. And then, of course, you have much better visibility than anybody. Now, if I go here to the top, these are your OnStar buttons. This is to call OnStar services. SOS is for emergencies. We have the emergency lights. And then we have this off switch. When you push that, it's going to show you here motion sensor is off. So, for instance, if you're taking your car in a trailer to a track or something, you don't want your alarm activating every five seconds because the motion sensor is on. So we do give you the option to shut it off and that way your alarm is not going off every five seconds when you drive it. Now, I'm gonna go to the steering wheel and I'm gonna show you here the bottom of the steering wheel is flat, the top of the steering wheel is flat as well. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have your minus pattern shifter. This is the downshift. You see how nice it is, it's like aluminum. And then the right side has the plus, which is to upshift. Now, on the left side of the steering wheel, we have your cruise control buttons. Now, to activate them, you hit this a button here and turn on cruise control then you hit the set button and it will stay at that speed to increase the speed you hold it up to decrease the speed you hold it down then we have on the right uh, your uh, heated steering wheel also your talk button talk to the radio this is to hang up the phone or mute the radio and then we have these four arrows to dominate or control your driver information center so basically you move the wheel down to flip through the pages here up and down and then you move to the right to change to different menus. See, I'm looking here at the lap timer, G-Force, etc. This is what's playing on the radio. This is my maintenance menu. See, show me my old life, air filter life. I can see the hours of the engine. Then I can up to these options and go to info type selection. So I can change everything that I'm looking at in these two screens here going on to this menu. Just go here and select what I want to see. Then to go back, you hit the left button. That's how that works. Uh, so at the end, we can also simplify everything. If you hit simplify by pushing the wheel, everything goes away. It's kind of simplify your life <laughs> with no more gauges, confusing gauges. You just see the speedometer and the RPMs. That's it. It's worth mentioning your RPMs are set up to 3,500 RPMs. 
that would be for the first 500 miles. After that, it's gonna move down to 6,500 RPMs. We do that during the braking period. Uh, and to get back to normal life, not simple, not so simple, we can just hit the button again and go back to the main menu. Now, on the left side of the steering wheel, we have your favorite, and this is to change your favorite radio stations. On the right of the steering wheel, we have two more buttons. This is plus and minus, that's to raise or decrease the volume. There's a Z mode button here. If I push it, I'm accessing my Z mode immediately. It will look like that. If I hit Z mode again, immediately it take me back to touring mode. So now everything changed to touring mode. You see how everything changed here too. So if I move this wheel to the left, I will navigate to the first menu or the first mode that you say, which is weather. This is to give you better traction. Then we have my mode, which is a mode you can create to relax. Then we have the tour mode, which is a mode created just to drive around. When we have a sport mode, we're getting more serious now. <laughs> and then finally, the, the big daddy, the track mode. In track mode, everything is maxed out. Here, we, we mean business, you know, everything changed <laughs> to, to track mode. Not only here, also on your headset display, which is hard to see on this video, but it's there. You can move it up, you can move it down. See, your RPMs now are like a bar like this. And again, you can customize all this menu to whatever you want to see when you are in track mode, uh, including uh, the, the G-Force. We'll show you the G-Force here, or you can have the G-Force there. So you can have both if you want. Uh, also, you can change your driving information, as you say, your heads of display here by hitting the information button. It just doesn't change all that much when you are in track mode. Let me make it brighter. I don't know if you can see it now. All right, there we go. So now we can see the RPMs. Sorry for the flashing, you should not do that, but it's just the quality of my camera. In real life, it's not flashing though. But there it is, you have a heads-up display. That comes standard with the 2LT package as well. Everything you see here, luxury-wise, comes standard on the 2LT package. Now, going on the infotainment system, it's quite easy to use. The same infotainment system we use in other vehicles, a Chevrolet products, with the addition of PDR, which is the performance data recorder. Once you put your SD card on the glove box, you can access this menu and start recording. You can choose your video overlay. For instance, if I choose the sport overlay, I can hit preview. And it shows me how it looks in sport. You see, that's exactly what you're gonna see on your video. You're gonna see the time date, how many miles you've driven, miles per hour, G-Force, RPMs, etc. But if I go back here and change my sport preview to track, excuse me, track, it would look like this. And it even show me uh, the map of the track I'm on. And it shows me this, the direction of my steering wheel when I turn it. And also show me the G-force, differential, and stuff like that. So track has the most information. However, uh, sport or touring has a more simple layout. And you can choose to record audio or even the quality of your video. If you go here to settings, see so you can choose to record audio. You can record in 480p or 1080p. Depends how you, much you wanna use your memory. Uh, also, if you have the home button here, it lets you use the climate settings from the screen instead of having to use this button. So if this is too confusing to you, just hit the climate button on the screen. There's a shortcut for it right here. See, there's a shortcut for navigation, a shortcut for uh, climate. See, the wrong one there, but yeah. You get the idea, let me admit this again because I get copyright if I play the radio. And speaking on the radio though, you have 14 speakers. This is the performance Bose series. Uh, so, or I should say Bose performance series. <laughs> it's the best sound system I ever had in a Corvette. And it's the only car in the world to be a two people car, two person car with 14 speakers. We used to have 10, and that, that was a lot. Now we have 14 of them. We also have an app store where you can download apps and install it on, directly to your radio. Over 20 apps are offered. Uh, this vehicle comes with a free subscription with Wi-Fi, so you can utilize that Wi-Fi to download your favorite apps. Among them, you can see whether Channel, Spotify, Pandora, all the popular apps are here, so uh, plenty to choose from. We used, we used to have only three apps, so now we have a lot more. We have on-star services, of course, your Wi-Fi, 4G, LTE, works 50 feet around the car, up to... Uh, seven devices can be connected to this car. It's a two-person car that connects seven devices for <laughs> for Wi-Fi. It's pretty impressive, uh, our infotainment system and all the layout here. Everything is facing the driver, absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's so relaxing. 
so aggressive if you want to. Uh, it's just bring you the best of everything we have. And if you notice that mirror extend two inches longer than this mirror and if I didn't tell you that you would never notice most people don't ever notice but it's the court they do on all mid-engine cars they have to do that just to have better visibility and speaking of visibility you see how easy it is to look out of this car compared to the old ones that had the big nose and this uh, the driver position uh, was moved I think 13 and a half inches in forward so you're sitting in um, more up front of the car now than before. Ah, so I hope you enjoy it, my friend. It is a beautiful car. I'll be waiting for you. I'm going to put it back in the showroom, wipe it down a little bit, and just wait for you to come get it, my friend. My God, what a beautiful car. Let me give it another one just for the exit, right? <laughs> another car start. Let's see. Here it is. I'm going to hit this button twice. It's coming. There we go, nice and smooth. I'm gonna give it another walk so you guys can enjoy this beautiful machine going out. And now I'm gonna show you the price because everybody wants to see the price. <laughs> All right, so we have a 2022 Corvette Stingray Coupe 2LT C51 Torch Red 6.2 V8 Direct Injection XP Dual Clutch standard vehicle price for that is 68,200 then we have the package for the c51 the front lift we have the uh, oh the c51 magnetic ride suspension very nice high wing spoiler uh, wheels we also have the edge red calipers the rocker panels the red seat belt battery protection package carbon flash mirrors only a hundred bucks for that so that's not bad it's worth mentioning, you could have the spoiler painting for that amount too. Uh, for a total of $84,025. And after market, dealer market adjustment, we are at $125,000. What a beautiful car, what a great price, what a great value. Uh, I know the market is crazy right now, guys, but it is worth it. I have to say, if you look at other options for $125,000, a new car out there, there is nothing else like this. It, it, is, it is crazy. It's, it's hard to admit it, but it's true. There is nothing else like this for less money out there from any other auto, auto, automaker. You have to spend probably a lot more on a Porsche or anything like that. So great value still, even with the market adjustments and whatnot. Uh, but there's ways around that. You guys know how, it, how this is. Uh, I forgot to mention the rocker panels are awesome. They covered this area right here and they made up the same texture of the splitter so when you get a c51 package it's good to get this uh, obviously it comes with the splitter but it's good to get that to go with kind of the splitter it flows very nice and it's completely functional you can see it protects that area of the car all right guys that's my time i hope you like this video hit like and subscribe i'm always trying to make videos but look at my inventory here it's, <laughs> it's kind of uh Yes, it's kind of slim right now. These are all used, but most of them are used. Uh, so we, we are in this uh, situation together. The whole world is like this. But thanks to guys like Mr. Hatfield, we keep it rolling, man. Take care. Have a nice day and an awesome weekend. Your friend Angel from Pam Chevrolet. Bye-bye.